Uh, Jesus tells his disciples to pass the word. Pass the word. It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them. That is passing the word. <laughs> passing the word. The word that I have taught you, the word that I have told you uh, that gives, leads to eternal life. And so even though that's a job of the disciples, that is a job of all of us. Yes, yes. And there's nothing wrong with reading your children bedtime, bedtime stories out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. And I think it's good that we read, our, read to our children, not just uh, bring them to church, but read to them at home. And then God, Jesus told his disciples when he was getting ready to ascend to heaven, he said in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. In other words, pass the word Amen. on to the next generation. And that's a job for all of the church collectively has that job, but each Christian individually has that responsibility. You do. And for those of us who have lived longer than others, we have the responsibility of telling our children, telling our children the good things that God has to offer. So Paul, knowing that he his death was imminent, uh, decided to tell Timothy what to do. He knew that he wasn't going to be around very long, and he wanted the word that he had been teaching to continue. So he says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, he says, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, I give you this charge, and he tells Timothy to do, to do what? Preach. Preach the word. That's important. That's our responsibility. The word. The word. What God wants us to do. The word. What's the word, brother? God. Anyway, don't, don't, don't go there. <laughs> Remember the 70s? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. But, <laughs> pass the word. And so it's the responsibility to preach the word. And then he gives it, we prepare in season, out of season, you know, correct and rebuke and encourage and with the presence and careful instruction, all that stuff. Uh, all that stuff, all that scripture. <laughs> uh, but the time will not come when men will not uh, put up a sound. There's a time when, when kids won't listen as they want to, but we need to do what? In season and out of season. When they listen and when they don't listen, right. you continue to give the word. Now we've got to understand what is the word? What's the definition of the word that we ought to pass to our children? It's important. We pass a lot of things, but we've got to pass the word. That's the most important thing for, for life, liberty, and the pursuit of Christ is the word. So what is the word? The Bible, in our, in our uh, King James Version of the Bible, or or in our Bible as we have it, there are, there are two Greek words for the word word. The Greek language is a multiple language. It has many definitions for one word. And the English language has usually just one definition for one word. Uh, uh, one word that, that has multiple definitions, the Greek language has. But two meanings. One is logos, and the other is rhema. Now, when you see that in the Bible, you're only going to see the, the English transliteration, W-R-D. But if you have a Greek uh, Bible, it will say logos or rhema. And there are two definitions. This is the word we need to pass to our children. The first one, logos, means an expression of thought. The Ten Commandments are the sum of God utterances, what God has said. Or the storm of knowledge. What you can place in your mind that you can remember. Amen. That's the word. Amen. The spoken word of God. Yes. So I'm going to read to you the 23rd Psalm. And you know it. That's the word of God. It's spoken. It's read. And you know it. I asked this morning. How many of you know the 23rd Psalm? <coughs> Who knows it? The 23rd Psalm. What is it, sister? 23rd Psalm. Tell us. The Lord is what? 
I shall not. Makes me to lie down. Right, that's the word, and we know it. That's the stone of knowledge. Thank you, ma'am. That's the stone of knowledge. And so we that's the word. That's 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 one definition of the word. It's just share the 66 books of the Bible with your children. And I think we need to pass that on. Amen. Secondly, there's another Greek word for word. It, it, we call it rhema. And you heard that term a lot, rhema word. It means being able to use individual scripture that the Holy Spirit brings to your remembrance in a time of need. Not only do you know the word, but you can use the word. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And there are two things. Logos is knowing, rhema is using. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But it's not only good to know it, but you've got to use it. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, if you have a sword in your hand, uh, you've got to know how to use it. Amen. But you can't use something you don't have. Amen. And so the Bible tells us we need to pass that to our kids. The spoken word, what it says, and the active word, how to use it. Amen. In times of need. And when kids get to college or they go to the military or they get married or whatever, they're going to need to know the word, yes. but they're also going to need to know how to use the word. All right. yes. They don't have to use it, they're still in trouble. Yes. You, know, you can have a car, if you can't drive, you're in trouble. Right. Yeah. And so we got to teach them how to use it as well as to, to teach them, uh, uh, get them. Get them the word. So we have, I want to share with you logos and and rhema uh, in terms of the word. So by this time you have spoken with the person behind you, haven't you? example I gave this morning, we were talking about, I don't know where we were talking about friends, and, and people sharing the word and stuff like that, talking about friends, and I said that it's, it's, it's amazing to me that most people say they only have a couple of friends, two or three friends at the most. Then you think about that. You belong to a sorority or fraternity, or you belong to a Masonic organization or a club, and you have meetings, and you get together, you have banquets and cookouts and all sorts of stuff. You belong to a church, and you fellowship, and have a picnic and all sorts of stuff. And you have a lot of people in your life. But then you say, and, 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 and are the choir members, and, and, and y'all sing together? And you say, how many friends? I got two. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all these people you hang with, you only have two friends? It's amazing to me <laughs> how people can only have two friends. <laughs> All the people you know, you only have two friends. And most people I talk to, Pastor, I only got a couple of friends. I said, but you know, don't you belong to this group? Don't y'all go out to dinner every week? Yeah, but they're not my friends. <laughs> But let's move on. <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to get to it because it's this is amazing. So let us, let us look at um, what we're going to pass on to our children. This is so important. The Bible instructs us to, that we ought to pass the word. Amen. No doubt about that. So the first thing we want to pass on to our children and to the teenagers uh, and collectively or in a broader sense or, or the sum of God's thoughts is that, number one, we have a God who has invited us into his family. We have a God, that's, that's what God said, we need, we need to pass that to everybody, that we have a God who has invited us into his family, or we are part of his family. Think about that for a moment. You are a part of God's family. Now, God is the head of your family. And, and we need to let people know that for a reason. We'll get there in a minute. But that's something we need to let our kids know. No matter where they go, they are part of God's family. 
And we didn't tell ourselves that sometimes because family has certain connotations. So Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6 says, To be specific, Paul writes, the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus. We need to let people know that you are part of God's family, you are fellow heir, fellow member, fellow, fellow partaker of the promise that God has for you. You are part of God's family. We need to let each other know, second to, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, that so then you are no longer strangers or aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. Amen. Now, what that tells us is the logos, knowledge. You're storing in knowledge, and you're minding, this is going to be mine. I'm a part of God's family. I'm a part of God's program. God is my father. And that's the logos. And God wants us to spread that to all our children for a purpose. And we'll get the minute. We'll get there. But we need to let people know that because some people don't feel that. They don't know that. You are part of God's family. Ephesians, Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 says, For our citizenship, this is logos again, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for our Savior. So our membership is in heaven. Our home is in heaven. sometimes. I'm still a child of God. Amen. Even when somebody tells me something, I'm still a child of God. Even when I feel bad and I fall on my face, I'm still a child of God. Amen. Because positionally, God sees me as holy. Amen. 